folks, it's a beautiful day here at the penthouse suite. We got all kind of activity over here on Times Square, my friends. And my goodness, I didn't put that camera a little bit too low, chopping off the top of my head. What do they call that? It's too tight. But I've already got the focus down, so I'm not gonna mess up the focus. Download the app today and get a trial. I'm not gonna mess up the focus. I'm not gonna mess up the focus there. <clears throat> here we go, boom, panes. Check, check, check. Are we live? Coming to you live from the penthouse suite. No, I'm not live, folks. I am not live, but uh, oh, I gotta get them blood lights in there. Beautiful, right there. I'm not live, but I am coming to you from the balcony of my penthouse suite, the sun has went down right over that mountain. And I was getting everything set up, but the sun was still beating down on my camera and it was just too hot. I had to put my hat over the camera to keep it from getting too hot. But once that sun goes down, it just changes the temp. It's a beautiful day here in the Philippines. I know you guys have heard me say that a million times. I'm shooting on my, my studio camera. Sony FDR AX100, fucking champion, using my Sennheiser mics, if anybody's interested. And they're shooting uh, 4K, 24 frames a second. Sitting here listening to some Kid Rock, Tennessee Mountaintop. If you haven't seen Kid Rock, I'll put the link down in the description. But listen, whether you like Kid Rock or not, you have to watch this video. It's called Kid Rock. Well, it's by Kid Rock. Tennessee Mountaintop. It's about this motherfucking raccoon that goes out to California trying to make it, I guess, as an actor, to the uh, entertainment business, whatever. So he rolls out there and, like, you know, shit falls apart. He comes home, catches his girlfriend in bed with another girl. <laughs> it's a great fucking video. The link is down in the description. Click that shit and watch Tennessee Mountaintop. I mean, it's, it's fucking classic. It's classic. I mean, you could, I guess you could let your kids watch it, maybe. I don't know, don't, don't, don't let your kids watch it until you watch it and make that determination because you're the fucking parent, not me. But it's got a fucking raccoon in there. It's like a puppet. You can't get any better than that shit, I'm telling you. So, folks, this, this charcoal got so hot and was such a champion, I figured it would be nothing but dust. But when I came here to clean out the grill, I mean, it's like this shit is fucking kryptonite. You just can't kill it. And so I'm recycling the charcoal that cooked uh, yes, yesterday's meal perfectly. This charcoal I bought up in Super Town Market is like from another fucking planet. It's like it dropped off a fucking meteor or some shit. But I think I'm, I can recycle uh, this shit again. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I don't give a damn. So I got like five uh, bags of the same charcoal. I got four, three more from the same place, and that's gonna be my new go-to spot to buy charcoal, because the shit I buy around here, it's hit or miss. But, damn, I fucking hit the lotto. I hit the lottery. Couple cigar butts, put them in there for flavor. Couple peppers, and a little piece of pork for good measure. Can't hurt, right? And I got some fucking credit card statements, bills, whatever the fuck this is, I'm fucking Send them bastards up in smoke. They're going up in smoke. So today, folks, what did I do today? Today, well, before I get into my day, I hope everybody out, out there around the world, I hope you guys had a great day. I really do. And if you're just now joining me on my channel, I want to thank you for being here. And right there down on your screen before we even get started the bottom right hand corner of your screen it's right down there it's a little white overstay rose sign or if i change it whatever the graphic is click that get on board my channel 
you subscribe, it helps us out with the algorithm. We certainly appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, so what? <clears throat> hope you guys had a great day. I had a fucking great day. I'm gonna tell you why. I got up this morning. Well, wait a minute, let me talk about it. I did a video showing you drinking that Bud Light, saying thanks to everybody for being here on my channel. <clears throat> so last night, I was laying there watching a, watching a YouTube video. I don't even remember, well, it wasn't a, uh, a movie on YouTube. A B movie, great fucking movie. I didn't even get through it. I'm gonna try to start it over again tonight. I just fucking couldn't stay up, I passed out. When I went to bed, we were at 19,990 or 91 subscribers. I woke up this morning, we were over 20 grand with like an additional 50. Like I went to sleep, I woke up, I had 60 new subscribers. Thanks to everybody for jumping on board my train and helping grow my travel show, my cooking show. I just want to say thanks again. And folks, them two Bud Lights I talked about and my buddy Todd, Todd brought me, they didn't, they didn't fucking lie. They didn't survive the day. I was going to keep them and savor them and sip them on the cooking shows. You know, one for this cooking show, one for the next. Them motherfuckers, they did not survive the day. So I'll just uh, let them guys hang out here. And goddamn, those Bud Lights were delicious. Absolutely delicious. With this caveat. Okay. Now I haven't drank Bud Light in about a decade. Almost, well, maybe, maybe that long. Shit, I don't know. It's been a fucking years. And I'm gonna tell you that they taste different now. And what they taste like is as if Bud Light has used less hops, less ingredients, it's a little bit more watered down. And this is coming from a dude who hasn't tasted a Bud Light in years. And now I just tasted three, you know, three different cans. And I gotta call out Budweiser, folks. You, you are fucking, uh, you are slipping on the quality. And I suspect what it is, it's the bottom line. You don't put as much hops. You fucking shaved off 20% of the hops. You shaved off 20% of this, that, and the other, trying to fucking further the, the corporate bottom line. But don't get me wrong, they were they were delicious, but they were not the same Bud Lights that I'm used to, that I've always been used to. There's something different. Budweiser, I know what you fucking did. You know what, I, I know a Bud Light. That's a Bud Light, but that's a, maybe a 30% shaved quality hops, ingredients, Trying to make more money. Trying to get fucking greedy. That's what it is. But I was talking with my old man and what he said was, he said, look, dude. He said, over here in the States now, this new generation, you know, generation, uh, what I call the, the CODs, Call of Duty shithead. Shitheads, you know, generation fucking basement dwellers playing video games, jacking off the fucking midget porn. All the CODs. He said, they don't fucking drink Bud Light. They don't drink goddamn Miller Light. They don't drink Coors. When they leave the basement and go hang out with their friends, they order one motherfucking craft beer and sip on it all night. He said, fucking Budweiser's hurting. And how the hell do I know? I ain't been there in a long time, but what he's saying makes fucking perfect sense that all these, these young Call of Duty shitheads with 20% uh, less testosterone, they can't fucking drink more than one beer because they can't fucking handle being drunk. They're certainly not interested in chasing fucking ladies and getting laid. Uh, so that makes perfect sense. The beer sales are down. Budweiser is shaving off the fucking the quality because they can't sell as much beer as they used to. Uh, you know, because all these CODs, Call of Duty shitheads, are going out buying, you know, this fucking local craft beer, drinking one and calling it a night and going home, jacking off. That's what I think about that. So, uh, anyhow, I'll kill them Bud Lights. Thank you very much, Ty. But I did have to call out Budweiser after I truly evaluated it objectively and said, hey, they have cut down on the quality. 
And I'm calling you out on it. I know you did it. So, uh, there you know, folks, I, uh, I had a great day. Spent it with wife number one, Forrest G. We went over to uh, SM Central, and then we kicked it over to Harbor Point, walked around a little bit, got some exercise, just looked around. You know, it's good, clean fun on the window shopping. But what I, what, what I discovered today is that Filipinas have this secret language when it comes to food. It's a nonverbal slash body language slash sign language slash, you know, pointing with their lips, winking. I don't know what it was, but we came in and there were no words exchanged. I didn't hear anything about a mango. And we get in the, in the, con, in the condo, in the penthouse here. And Fatima says, hey, go downstairs because, uh, you know, Atibi Roots got mangoes. I said, what are you talking about? How the hell do you know that? She's like, she told me. Well, I was with her when we, when we came in. I didn't hear none of this. But apparently there were some, hey, pss, you know, a little, little winking, a little pointing with the with the I don't know if maybe some hand signs I like sign language I don't know but according to Fatima there were some mangoes downstairs so she said go down go down there and ask her about the mangoes so I go down there you know I got me a beer and I'm like you know the girl her nickname's Birot and I'm like hey Fatima said I gotta ask you something about a mango something about some mangoes what's going on all the ladies start laughing. And they're talking in Tagalog. I got no idea what the hell they said. Then she reaches down and pulls out this big ass bag of mangoes and starts loading up uh, you know, a small bag for Fatima for fucking mangoes. They all knew what was going on. I was there. I walked through. I had no idea. Nobody said anything about mangoes. There wasn't even any words exchanged, but the secret Filipino language when it per pertains to mangoes and I think some other foods. You got the beer? Uh, put it up in the freezer, baby, because I'm, I'm still drinking this. Put the beer in the freezer, let it get to the appropriate temperature, and uh, five minutes later, bring it out. But you can bring them chops out whenever you get a chance. No, you know what? No, I got to. That's slow to start. Just bring the chops and the beer at the same time, about five minutes. Thank you, baby. Hey, baby, 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 did you pay Baroque? No, they said no. I... Yeah, I was just messing with you. I just told you you owed her 50 pesos. You didn't owe her anything. It was a joke. Sorry. Anyhow, so they fucking loaded up this bag of mangoes for Fatima. I brought them up here, and I was messing with her because I'm still trying to figure out how the hell they communicated this. It was like telepathically. When it comes to mangoes or like kamotaku or you know maybe some seafood, crabs, they, they, they can communicate telepathically about this food where you have no idea what they're talking about. So I was like, all right, I said, here's, you know, I brought the mangoes up, big ass bag, and I said, hey, you owe her 50 pesos. So I was just messing with her. She didn't owe her nothing, but she went down there and tried to pay her 50. Gave her, gave me an excuse to send her down there to get me more beer. Yeah, so, uh, you know, just perplexed by that, how, how that came about. So she's in there chopping up these mangoes. And I look in there, and without offering the foreign guy any mangoes or nothing, she's in there fucking just chowing down on these mangoes like, it's a, like she's on death row and it's the last fucking meal. And I go in there and I look. And I'm like, did you put soy sauce on those mangoes? And all the mangoes she chopped up, we got soy sauce all over it. Man, I was like, she's like, you want some? You want some? I'm like, hell no. I don't want no damn soy sauce on my goddamn mangoes. So she didn't even think to cut me up one. Hey, here's one. No, no, no. She went in there, chopped up a bunch, poured the, poured the soy sauce, and I think she sprinkled sugar on there. And fucked up the mangoes. I'm like, no, I don't. Folks, I'm considering, I told you I've already banned soy sauce for the most part. I've just banned it. I don't want to see it in my ref. 
If I see packets of magic wrap, I immediately trash them. And you could think I'm an asshole, but everything in this country, almost everything is cooked with those two ingredients. Soy sauce, magic wrap. If you think I'm an asshole, this is what I want you to do. If you're in America, you, you uh, get your hands on about 20 packets of magic wrap, you know, three, four big things of soy sauce, and on Monday, I want you to marinate your chicken in that and cook it on the grill. And you're going to eat it and you're going to be like, damn, that fucking shit's delicious. What the hell fucking the king talking about? I love it. And then on Tuesday, I want you to marinate your pork chops in soy sauce and magic syrup. you would be like, damn, it's pretty good too. On Wednesday, make some hamburgers. Marinate them in soy sauce and magic syrup. You get the drift, right? I guarantee, I guarantee you, in about seven days, eight days of eating that same fucking flavor, you don't want to eat that shit. But when you get tired of eating it at day number eight, I want you to eat it for another 10 days. And at the end of the fucking 18 day mark of eating everything that you put in your mouth, marinated, and soy sauce and magic syrup, you will ban the fucking shit from your house too. I promise you. And that's what I'm up against because they don't they don't want to just cook it on Monday and then bring hit me again on Wednesday or hit me again on Saturday. No, it's every night unless I stand up and assert an objection that I'm not eating. You know. It's like fucking vitamins. It's, it's like they're trying to feed you vitamins in this little yellow packet of magic wrap. Fuck that. I'm done with that shit. I got enough balls to say I don't care if I'm in the Philippines. I don't care if this is your culture. I am not eating that flavor every fucking night of my life. Life's too short. That's just the way it is. So anyway, I pretty much banned it, but her ass is in there. I don't know where the hell she, I don't even know where she got the soy sauce. What that tells me is she's got a secret stash of soy sauce that I haven't raided and fucking got rid of because she's got it on the mangoes in there. Yeah, whatever, enough about that, but I'm not eating that shit. Hopefully she saves me at least one or two mangoes for me later on. So we came home, folks. We were coming home, the baby fell asleep, so I forgot to tell I forgot to tell Jason in the Lamborghini to stop at uh, Fresh Options and pick up some chicken. So I was like, well, we'll just get some chicken from the bicycle lady. Or... And then she opens up the, re or the, the freezer. She's got two frozen pork chops in there. Big old thick ass pork chops. I'm like, where the hell did you get that? And she said, oh, from the Ate this morning. Now folks, I don't know the first Ate around here that sells pork chops. The lady on the bicycle, usually she's got fish and chicken. And maybe this morning she, she had some chops. Maybe that's where Fatima got it. I don't know. But I tell you this, them chops are gonna get an extra, extra fucking cooking because I don't know where they come from. I don't know the origins of these chops. Now, a lot of times what my Filipino do. Now folks, look, I'm big on food safety. You know why? I, I got two babies. I don't want the babies getting sick over bullshit like food not being properly cooked or old food, stuff like that. Listen, we're not rich, but if the food is questionable, I would rather fucking give it to James over there and let Faye's dog eat that shit. And if it's not good, let, let James get the shits for a week than the babies, right? So I always err on the side of safety. They think I'm wasting food. No, I don't like to waste food, but when the food is fucking questionable, I'm not feeding it to, these, to, to our babies and I don't want to eat it too because I don't want to fucking be sick for a week. You know, I got shit to do. So what they'll do a lot of times when I come in here and I tell them, hey, how long has that shit been sitting there? Uh, since yesterday morning and it's fucking the next night. I'm like, throw that shit out. Don't feed that to anybody. Come on, God damn it. It's not in the ref. It's been sitting out in the fucking Philippine heat for like 40 hours. We can't eat that. They don't want to throw it out. So. I'm worried about these pork chops because I'm suspecting that Fatima obtained these pork chops on less 
than legitimate grounds and she don't want to tell me about it because she knows I'm going to fucking throw them out and I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to let James eat them. James the dog. So I'm kind of worried about that. But once I take a look at them on this little grill, and folks, that is yesterday's damn charcoal that got red hot, cooked. Uh, what the hell was I cooking? I was cooking pork chops, vegetables, and I've just recycled it, and that shit is just hot as can be. Shout out to my folks up at Subic Market. I don't know where you got this charcoal, but damn, that's the best charcoal I've ever got in the Philippines. That shit is red hot, recycled. <laughs> I might even get three, three uh, cookings out of this. I don't know. Yeah, so anyhow, when she brings these pork chops out, folks, I'm charboiling the shit out of these bastards because I don't know where she got them. I don't know how old they are. And if you're not familiar with the Philippines, here in the Philippines, there's a term called double dead or twice dead. And what that means is when you go to the market, you check out that meat closely. Not the chicken, you know, but the fucking pork. Because what that means is if people have spent, you know, six months raising a hog and they got all this money in a hog and they woke up, walk out there in the morning, that fucking hog is laying dead. Do you think they're just going to lose that fucking money? That hog is expensive. That's their fucking life savings for six months. You think they're just going to fucking let that hog, you know, all bury it or fucking burn it? Hell no. They wake up in the morning and that fucking hog is laid out dead as a hammer. They're going to work butchering that motherfucker and you're going to be sold that meat in the market. Now, I can't even be creative enough to make up the fucking term double dead or twice dead. This is reality here. That's another, another reason we like going to fresh options. There's no flies over there and, and there ain't no meat fucking double dead. At least I've got a little, I've got faith in them. But you go to the market, you better be the local market. Uh, you better certainly be checking out that meat to make sure it don't look a little gamey. Hey, honey, bring them chops and them taters out, baby. Buddy man, bring that meat out. I'm ready. That bitch in there still chomp, chomping down on them goddamn mangoes. She should have been chopping up them taters. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm telling you right now. You know, I'd never heard this term in America. I'd never heard this term in uh, Central America, Southeast Asia, anywhere until I came to the Philippines. And people said, oh, don't, you know, don't go to that market. Be careful. Why? Well, you might get the double dead. I'm like, what the fuck is a double dead? I'm thinking zombies. You know what I mean? If I just told you the word double dead, you know, if you're from the West, if I just said, hey, uh, be careful of the double dead. There might be some double dead up there. Twice dead. You think it's a zombie movie. It ain't no fucking movie. They're talking about, hey, that fucking pig died of natural causes. You know, or got hit by a fucking jeepney and laid out in the fucking sun for like eight hours. And then they butchered the son bitch and took the shit and sold it. Because nobody's losing money here. Nobody's losing money here in the Philippines. That's the environment. That's the, you know, a lot of people are just surviving. And if you think they're going to fucking lose 400, you know, $300 US dollars, which is huge fucking money for a lot of people, you think they're going to lose, you know, 10,000 pesos on a fucking hog that just happened to die, they're not going to lose that money. They're going to go to fucking carving that son of a bitch. And that motherfucker's coming to the market as meat. Double dead, twice dead. You don't believe me? You ask your Filipino wife about it. She'll tell you. It's part of life here. So when I see that fucking pork chop in there, I don't know where it come from. Maybe she got a fucking steal on it. Somebody gave it to her. I mean, I got to I gotta err on the side of safety. If that motherfucker looks too gamey, uh, it's got to go to James. James. James the dog over here at Faye's house, that motherfucker is, is the is the is the final taste tester. You know what I mean? And it's not my choice. Faye, Faye wants to take it over there to him. So if something kills James, it's not on me, it's on Faye. So these pork chops, baby, 
Can you tell my viewers where these pork chops come from? Because we're concerned that this might be twice dead or double dead. The bicycle lady with the fish and the chicken? Are you sure it's good? Well, take a look, baby. Make sure this ain't double dead. How come I know? Can you explain to the viewers about what double dead means? Well, you're dead, then. <laughs> come here. Let your hair down and come here and just explain right quick. I want. Okay, all right. All right, basically she said, oh, it's already dead, and then they, they bring it to the market. Yeah, so the pig dies, and then they chop it up, right? That's what double dead means. <clears throat> Kick him a quick kid rock here. You got a little pole dump. So now, okay, this, this is straight now. Now that it's thawed out, and now that I know definitely where it come from, it come from the bicycle lady that sells the chicken and the fish. I'm good to go now. I'm not concerned no more. Excuse me. You want more? You want more bear? You got it in the freezer? Yeah. Give it uh, three, four more minutes and bring it on out. <clears throat> yeah, so now I'm confident the pork is good to go. I trust my bicycle lady over here. She's here every day, morning and night. She sells out, so she's not fucking recycling stuff the next day. And actually, god damn, these are some good looking hunks of fucking meat. Check that shit out. That's a big ass thick one right there, my friends. Yeah, it's a big ass thick one. That's about as thick as Fatima's ass, and I like big butts, and I cannot lie. Oh shit! Now I know why she bought it. Look at that big ass piece of fat right there. And folks, if you had a Filipino girlfriend or wife, they love fat. They love to eat that fat. The same with my Thai wife. You know, we don't we don't eat too much fat from the West, but over here they fucking love it. So she probably ordered, look at that, that's got a big, huge chunk of fat on it. And this here ain't nothing but fat. So I know why she bought it now. She looked over in there and saw all that fat and said, you know, give me a little bit of meat for the foreign guy. I'm taking the motherfucking fat. Oh yeah, put the sauce to it. Mmm. Shout out to Fatima. I saw her in there marinating this. Now she put the, the Mama's Best Worcestershire sauce with that uh, a little salt and pepper and that Pellet Envy rub from my buddy. Man, I hope you're doing okay over there, man. I'm, I, that's all I'm gonna say, man. I hope you're doing okay. But my Pellet Envy rub is getting a little bit low, but the smell that just came off of that grill, when that shit just fucking off gas, these chops and this pork fat, well, you got pork chop, pork chop, pork fat, pork fat, pork fat, pork fat. So that's Fatima's on this side, that's mine over there. Everybody's happy. But yeah, so if you didn't learn anything else from this video, understand that if you move here, um, you need to be aware that there is a term called double dead, twice dead. And you need to make sure wherever you're getting your port from, you trust that person. You've done business with them and there's enough friendship there where they ain't gonna do that shit to you. But it happens, shit happens, you know what I mean? And look, you know, you gotta put yourself, it's all about perspectives. So you put yourself in other people's shoes. They went all in on a fucking pig and they're almost ready to cash in and all of a sudden that son of a bitch dies of a heart attack or got ran over by a jeepney. Put yourself in their shoes. You think they're gonna lose all that money? They're trying to survive. I'm not saying it's right, but it's all about perspectives, my friends. If you didn't see my previous video, if you need a uh, fan or something to fan your charcoal here, I highly recommend one of these baby formula boxes. This is a Nestogen 3. That's what the babies are drinking now. But when you flatten it out, it makes a perfect hinge where you can take the temperature of that charcoal on up. I need to take this up because I think what's going to have to happen, I think I'm going to have to pour another, uh, another bag of charcoal on there. It was wishful thinking that I could, uh, that I could get two total uses out of this, out of this charcoal. So, uh, 
Oh yeah, born free. And you know what, here's the thing, YouTube. When I cook and I drink, I want to listen to fucking Kid Rock. I want to listen to Hank Williams. I want to listen to George Strait, George Jones. And I know you got this copyright policy, which a copyright policy is so fucked up, nobody can understand it anyhow. But I'm telling you right now, when I fucking barbecue, I'm listening to some goddamn music. And if you want to fucking hit the copyright on me, take my money, that's on your fucking conscience. Who the fuck barbecues without listening to some good damn music? You know what I mean? I'm not fucking, I'm not sitting here in silence because I'm scared of the YouTube fucking guys taking my money. Take the fucking money. You know what I mean? Take it. Go ahead and give it to whoever you think needs it. But I certainly assure you, I'm pretty sure if I call Kid Rock and got him on the phone right now and say, hey man, I'm listening to your fucking music while I'm fucking getting drunk and damn barbecuing here in the Philippines, the Kid Rock will say, you know what, man, I'll sign off on that. I don't need that fucking, you know, I don't need that fucking 10 cents, dollar, whatever. Go ahead. You proceed, King Marcos, with your fucking cooking show with my music in the background. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll just call Kid Rock, clear with him, and he'll tell the corporate people to fuck off. Yeah, just put it in another Yeti cup, baby. By the time you bring that beer, I'll be finished with this vodka. All right, now I gotta get this charcoal in here without burning myself or screwing shit up. You know, shout out to my moms for uh, sending me these gloves. And they're from Hardy. And folks, to be honest, I don't know shit about Hardy. I have no idea where these come from my mom bought them but they have certainly been a good pair of cooking gloves so i might as well give a shout out to my friends over at hardy i don't know where these are made probably made in china maybe they're made in america i don't know but they've been a good pair of cooking gloves oh shit that's what i'm gonna try to do watch this you always test it right. Boom, finesse. Ooh. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm all right. Get a bag of charcoal in here. Get this going, and then I'll get it back on here. But baby, that's not a Yeti cup. That's a fake Chinese knockoff. Please put my beer in a proper Yeti cup. Thank you. Come again. I love you. If I do not come out here putting my beer in a fake knockoff Yeti cup, my God, that's a violation. I love you, honey. But don't ever bring that beer out in that fake fucking... Respect the beer. <laughs> you might think I'm an asshole. But you know what, folks? It, we joke about everything in life. Me and this old girl, we got a pretty good damn relationship, believe it or not. You know, you might think I'm an ass for what I, the way I live my life. That's your opinion. You know? I don't know, maybe she wishes she was married to a priest, a saint, whatever, not a priest, that's a bad. Maybe she wishes I was a saint, I don't know. Life ain't perfect, you know, it's what me and the J-Dog talk about. If you can if you can find a lady that's 80% what you're looking for, you better snatch her up. Even 75%, you better snatch her up, because there ain't no perfect person. There ain't no motherfucking knight in shining armor. There ain't no damn pretty woman. Thank you, honey. Hey, did you lock us out? My God. <laughs> there ain't nobody perfect. There's certain things she don't like about me. Certain things ain't perfect about her. But I say, man, we're at least over an 80% solution. And if you get to that point, you better hold on to your spouse, whoever you got. Because 80% is hard to achieve, my friends. Maybe at first, but it's hard to sustain. Let's put it that way. 80% is damn near impossible to sustain. So if you got somebody sustaining 80% what you like, you know, taking care of you on a daily basis, that other 20%, let that shit fucking go. Enjoy, enjoy your fucking life. You're pissed off about little things like 
you know, all my wife fucking reads in bed and keeps me up for an extra hour, or fucking eats goddamn crackers in the bed, gets crumbs in the bed. If that's the worst thing your old lady's doing, look, you, I mean, you, just, you let her eat crackers in the fucking bed and stay up for an extra hour, because that's a good lady. I promise you, there's plenty of nasty ass, well, women and men out there. You, your situation could be a whole hell of a lot worse, I promise you. <laughs> and some of you watching this, you're in that situation. So the rest of y'all, if you got an 80% solution, what the fuck is this damn, I have no idea. Get some George Strait Troubadour. And the rest of y'all, enjoy what you got. And if, 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 if you're miserable, you get rid of that bitch and try to find you an 80% solution. Feel 25. God, I love some George Strait. Seen that dude's concert so many damn times. Can't tell you how many times. Pretty much saw him every year for 20 something years straight. Traveled all over the country to see him. That's one thing I miss too, is going to concerts in America. Bud Light, Chinese, takeout, and concerts. I'm back, back, uh, I had an old lady, she was in marketing. I'm not gonna name you name, Dawn. I know you're watching my shows and I hope you're doing well. Had a great time when we were together. No use in even talking about the bad times because who gives a shit? Life's too short to dwell on the negativity. But you know, back when we were together, she was in public relations and marketing and she used to get free tickets to all these concerts <clears throat> because she was in the same business with everybody in the entertainment business. So literally by like Wednesday of every week, she she had these she would come on with these tickets like cards, like pick a card, any card. And she's like, which concert do you want to go to? And we would have front row free comp tickets to, to different concerts and we would literally have to choose which one we're going to she'd be like hey i got kid rock tickets for friday i got kid rock tickets i've got you know this band this band which one you want and we would pick the ones we want and then we would give the others away to my friends because they were fucking poor ass cops or you know all my friends were fucking poor poor bastards or give them to her friends and then we would have the same for Saturday night. She'd be like, where are we going Saturday night? Ah, I'll take front row to, uh, you know, whoever. So we went to concerts every Friday, Saturday night. That was our thing. Free. Oh, by the way, I never paid for a fucking round of golf for seven years while I was with this girl. Because she would just pick up the phone call and call the golf course. They knew who she was. Boom, you know. Round of golf for four comps. And me and my buddies would go take advantage of that. And damn, I didn't value that girl. I didn't value, uh, I don't know, I didn't value her enough. And that was my, my bad, my mistake. But you know what, I'm man enough to admit when I've made bad decisions. Uh, this girl dragged me all to uh, these who's who parties, you know. You know, like private parties with people like Jeff Gordon. I got a picture of me and Jeff Gordon like this. Um, you know, shit ton of celebrities, singers. This girl was in the mix. She's still in the mix. I'm not gonna mention your name, Dawn. Don't worry about it. Sweet girl. Sweet girl didn't work out. Mostly it was my fault, you know. It's the way it is. Between the fact that I, I wouldn't marry her, marry her and Got caught chasing pussy all the time. Extra ladies and story of my life. Shit happens. But uh, yeah, I didn't value that chick. I should have. But damn, I had a great life for her. She was a sweet girl. But I didn't put enough emphasis into it. She found a dude who would. And I saw a picture of that guy. God damn, he's an ugly motherfucker. Honey. <laughs> I'm telling the truth here. I'm telling the truth about everything. God damn, that was an ugly motherfucker. Wow. 
Um, but you know, if you're happy, that's all that's all that matters. If you're happy. But this is like 20 years later. I'd almost bet five dollars. That dude's dead by the by by now. I mean. He was an ugly motherfucker. He looked rough. And I was like, damn, this son of a bitch ain't gonna live too much longer. Anyhow, I don't even know how I got to talking about that. Oh, I guess because it's one of the things I miss about being in America is uh, my lifestyle. I used to go to concerts literally every week. You know, living in Atlanta, you had a lot of fucking options. Atlanta is a great was a great place for me because. You know, not only did you have the concerts and the options that were coming to venues in Atlanta, you know, between fucking Wild Bills, you know, Cowboys over in Kennesaw, originally the Crystal Chandelier. You had all the venues downtown. Uh, God damn, Atlanta's got so many venues that were running, con you know, great concerts. But you had to realize we were... We were striking distance from Nashville, fucking Knoxville, Birmingham, you know, uh, I mean, shit, we, we, it's no, it was nothing for us. If we had tickets up in Nashville, we jump in the car, boom, we go to Nashville for the weekend to hit them, hit a concert. So living in Atlanta was a great place, especially if you're in the country music scene, which we were, and this girl was getting fucking free tickets to everything, everything. You know, backstage, meet and greet. I was living the fucking dream, but my relationship with the girl, I was more like a cabin boy. I got an allowance every week if I was a good boy. And I went to Best Buy and fucking spent that money. <laughs> hey, you know what? Different times of our lives, folks, we all do shit to, sur to survive. It just makes for an interesting fucking story and an interesting fucking life. I was a cabin boy for seven years. Couldn't afford to do anything else, really, because my ex-wife, that cunt, was taking all my fucking money. So uh, I was in bad shape. So whether I liked what was going on or not, couldn't afford to do anything else. Had to fucking survive, you know? But I was, I was surviving and thriving. Even though she wore the pants in the family or thought she did. Every time she would treat me like a cabin boy and uh, remind me who was in charge, that's fine. I'd just go out and find a new girl to fuck around with for a while. See how that works, ladies? You think you got the upper hand, you don't. You know, and the problem for you ladies I mean, it's an unfair advantage that we men have. You may win all these little interim battles, you know, squabbling over kids, get all our money, whatever, but in the end, you lose because, because uh, we as men, the older we get, the more fucking sexy we get. The older I get, the fucking sexier I am and the more goddamn interesting I am. And most women, the older they get, the more out of whack they get, the fatter they get, and just ain't nobody chasing your ass. So, man, that's what you got to look forward to. The old lady giving you problems, just wait it out. Wait it out. We always win in the end. At some point, you should be down at the Waffle House applying for a job. Your child support will stop, which means you just got fucking rich. And you get better looking by every year. We get distinguished, and they get fucking fat and out of whack and undesirable. Goddamn Hank Williams. One in my hand. Look at here. And I got a good wife in there, folks. I got my Yeti cup, 22-ounce tumbler with the vodka. What's it called? The bar. The bar. $2 bottle of vodka from Divi Mart. It's okay, but I drank the hell out of this shit yesterday. It never got me drunk, never gave me a buzz. Uh, so I'm gonna have to try that Antonoff from the recommendation of my buddy. Because this shit right here, it don't even get you a buzz. And luckily, wife number one has brought in a beer. 
Cause it's, this, this shit ain't getting it. It just, it's no effect on my brain whatsoever. Enough about clothes and time. About stone out of my mind. And I ended up with some honky tonk special I found. Folks, you know, I went home with a lot of honky tonk specials. And if you haven't read my book, folks, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm horrible at self-promotion, right? I'm still learning the self-promotion game. Yeah, I got two books for sale. Believe it or not, this dumb fucking redneck, I wrote two books. I'm working on two more. I'm not actively working on them, but they've, I started them and they're in my head. But yeah, I wrote two books. Down in the description is the link. You know, I've been selling more books these days because I'm on YouTube and I'm understanding the importance of self-promotion. I always forget to mention, hey, you know, check out my books that are on Amazon. Links down in the description. The first book I wrote was about my adventures in Afghanistan. The second book I wrote is called The King's Chronicles. How to Escape the Wrath of American Women and Live Like a King. It's a fucking classic. It should be the man's Bible. Whether you agree with everything in there or not, it's a start. If that book don't invoke thought, in the United States mail, the American mail, then uh, then I just give up. I mean, I just absolutely fucking give up. But that book is designed to invoke thought and make you question, am I happy in my life? And am I living my life in such a fucking ridiculous manner that it's shameful? So yeah, going down in the, descri in the description, I think the link says my books are available on Amazon. Yeah, you know why they're available? Because I fucking wrote them. They're masterpieces. I poured my heart out on both of them. And I'm so exhausted from those two books. Now I wrote them 10 years ago. I won about a decade ago. One a couple years later, but I'm still so exhausted from writing them books. I am not prepared after 10 years to start three and four. I just put a little bit down so I know where I'm going to go, but I, I'm just not ready to commit. And you know, a lot of these writers, what they do when they write a book, and this is what I did on my first one. You know, I went to Thailand with my Thai wife. I woke up in the morning, started drinking rum, fucking typed until I just got so drunk and time to go get something to eat like one or two o'clock hell I had 30 fucking pages written 20 pages maybe 15 pages we go fucking hang out party do what we did to, you know and then the next morning I fucking got up in the condo writing while she's still sleeping and that's what you have to do you have to isolate yourself like a lot of these cats they go in some cabin in the fucking woods for one month they come out they hand that shit over to their editor and boom that's a book that's a bestseller but that's the way to do it, just to isolate yourself from all the distractions. If you're thinking about writing a book, you, you would be better off to take a month off from your fucking job, go get a cabin in the woods, and you will have that book done in a month. But if you try to write that shit around your house with your wife and your kids and your job and everything else, it'd take you fucking two or three years and it's, it'll all be fucked up. You need one month of solid concentration you know, solid, just fucking lifestyle. You don't have to get a cabin in the woods. You know, go, you know, grab a fucking bitch and go hang out on a beach somewhere for one month. No distractions. You got your lady there. You know, wake up in the morning, start hitting them fucking room, start writing. Every day you'll put, you'll lay down 20 pages and then just fucking go enjoy the afternoon, the evening. Start over in the morning. After a month, you'll have a book. Now it won't be edited but you will have the manuscript ready for editing and polishing. And your story will be told. The basic story will be told. You know, editing's a different story. Yeah, so anyhow, go down to the link in, my, in the description. It says my books are available on Amazon. And pick your poison. You can uh, read about my adventures in Afghanistan, which is pretty goddamn interesting if you ask me. 
But if you wanna if you wanna know about women, you read the King's Chronicles, my friends. You may not you may not agree with everything, but it will invoke thought in your ass. I'm sure I'm certain of that. And that's what you need. Because, you know, one guy can't give you all the answers to your situation to improving your life. Nobody can. I can give you advice. If I give you 10 pieces of advice, maybe you implement one or two, and that improves your life. But you read my book, I guarantee you it's going to invoke enough thought that you start questioning, wait a minute, you know, I don't agree with what he said, but I'm questioning... I mean, what his solution was, but I am questioning the concept, why am I living life like this? Damn, nested in three. That right there takes the temperature on up. That's just like a thermostat right there. Usually I make Fatima, well, I don't make her do anything. I ask her to fan it. Cause I'm sitting here talking to a camera, smoking a cigar and drinking a beer. But that charcoal, is just absolutely wonderful. Now folks, um, I'll take this little lull in action to ask you one more time, because they say unless you ask people three times to subscribe to your channel, they're not going to. So I asked you once at the beginning, please subscribe. Oh shit, let's get some Hank Williams Jr. all in Alabama. Now, folks, I love Hank Williams, and if you don't know the story about him almost dying up on the Ajax Mountain, just go to Hank Williams, you know, search Hank Williams on the Wikipedia. It sort of tells a story, but I want you to listen to Hank Williams Jr. It's called All in Alabama. Old Ajax Mountain. He almost died on that mountain. What was the topic? Oh, yeah. If you don't mind, folks, right over, hold on, I'm gonna burn myself. Right over there, little overstay road sign. Smash that sign for me. Subscribe and get on board this train, my friends. Food, beer, beasts, beautiful women, bad behavior, barbecuing, pouring my heart out about fucked up things in my life, my situation here. Right now, I'm in the Philippines. Philippines and Thailand, Southeast Asia, this is my home. Haven't lived in America in, in uh, just say a decade. Dixie Lane. I'll turn it down. Montana. Now, folks, it's a uh, Saturday night. And believe it or not, Times Square is a little quiet right now. But you never know about Times Square. You know, when the people out partying in the, in the bars and stuff, they come back looking for food. Times Square is unpredictable. I'm sitting up here at the fucking penthouse suite at the goddamn Waldorf Astoria barbecuing. And I just love people watching. You know, I got a couple drunk dudes over here and hang out. Sometimes I'm send them, send them some food down brighten up their night not you know not rewarding them for just being daily drunks but you never know folks you never know when you pay something forward how it affects people's lives side note I was talking to my old man today and uh, my old man's best friend named Bobby Joe passed away a few days ago he was uh, I believe 73 years old but if, you know I haven't talked a whole lot about my old man but he's a fucking legend so is Bobby Joe some of their exploits back when they were young are, are legendary hey baby excuse me let me pause for a minute here baby can you clean that bowl out and bring the bring the vegetables out there's no vegetables only the meat all right come on here Come on over here and say hello. So we only got rice tonight? Yeah. All right, folks, look. Today. We got the Forest G and the beautiful Fatima. Forest G had a long day, and uh, I think this boy might be getting a little sleepy. But yeah, honey, if you could bring, if you could uh, bring, or at least bring me a fresh bowl when this is ready, I'd certainly appreciate it. Hi, Alabama. Hey, boy. 
<laughs> Gotta wash his hand, baby. That boy is something else, folks. I love that little boy. I love little Maria. I love my son in the States and all my other babies around the world. Um, maybe I'm doing a video to explain all that. Anyhow, back to my old man. Man, shout out to you. I'm sorry to hear that your best friend, he died from a two year bout of cancer, 73 years old, but you know, true fucking soldier and legend right up until he died. And him and my old man back in the day, you know, they were free spirits, did some shit that, that's just absolutely legendary. Of course, my mother's gonna disagree. She absolutely disagrees with my perspective on it because, uh, you know, she was married to my old man when a lot of these exploits went down. Uh, so anyhow, different, different perspectives, right? But I'll tell one story while I'm on the subject, you know. And and this is a this is a famous story. My old man and Bobby Joe, now this is his 70, early 70s, I guess. My old man had a Dodge four-wheel drive, jacked up pickup with a roll bar. You know, we're all rednecks. Him and Bobby Joe riding down the road one day, had a cool little beer in between them. They was drinking beer, throwing the beer cans in the back. They just got to heading out of town and riding and riding. And, you know, they're both married. They got lives. They got jobs. And they just fucking kept riding. They just kept riding. And it eventually ended up in Little Rock, Arkansas. And I don't know how long they stayed. But basically, folks, they went on this fucking road trip after, after drinking beer. And went on this fucking tour around the southern United States. And nobody knew where the fuck they were at. I mean, I think... I think my mother and Bobby Joe's wife at the time thought they were dead or something. I mean, they, they had no idea where these cats were. So they ran out of money in Little Rock and then, you know, got some fucking jobs long enough to get a paycheck or whatever and then filled up the cooler with beer, put a tank of gas in that fucking Dodge four wheel drive and kept rolling. And I don't know, I think they wound up in New Orleans and did the same shit. I mean, these motherfuckers just went walkabout, didn't tell nobody, just got to drinking beer and said, motherfucker, let's ride. Life is life is short, let's ride. And so they were gone, I don't, fuck, I don't know how long they were gone, but by the time they came back or put, in, put the call in or whatever, everybody thought they were fucking dead. They call up, where the hell have you been? <laughs> been fucking riding. <laughs> I'm fucking jet flying, limousine riding, and women loving. But you know, that's the way my old man is. He's a free spirit. Bobby Joe's the same way. Rest in peace, my brother, my friend. More like an uncle to me. Uh, you, don't, you don't have many men like that anymore that, that do shit like that. Now, yeah, from my mother's perspective, they were assholes and they left them alone at home and blah, 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 blah. But goddamn, they came back. After they got it out of their system, they came back. <laughs> so anyhow, you know, I just want to bring that up. If you're religious, you know, say a prayer. But uh, Bobby Joe had a good run. Man, it was good knowing you. You know, I grew up around you as a child, and good man. He was a good man, just like my father was a good man. But they were also free spirits, and you know, never harm, never harm anybody, never steal anything. Just good people, good people. But that free spirit sometimes. When you ride in a jacked up motherfucking Dodge with a cooler of beer, sometimes it's just not time to turn around and go home to the grind. It's just time to fucking ride. I don't know, folks, that's the way I've lived my life and I can't blame my father. And my mother has a different opinion. And I love my mother, different perspective, but it's all good. Nobody got hurt, nobody starved. I mean, obviously my mom's 70 years old and she's still pissed. Still pissed about that little road trip them dogs took unannounced. 
But that road trip was legendary. I think everybody thought they were dead. They were just on a fucking road trip. Unannounced. Just motherfucking riding, and instead of doing this, oh shit, it's time to go home. Our wives gonna be worried about us. The motherfuckers just kept fucking riding, my friends. Till they ran out of gas and fucking Little Rock. Had to go to work. I think about that story a lot because sometimes, and it's not, not just me, I think we all wake up in the morning. Sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night or in the morning and you're like, how the fuck did I get here? Now whether that's, you know, you hate your life because you worked in a fucking factory for 20 years and you're fucking bored. 20 years just flashed in front of you or because you got drunk and you ended up waking up with a fucking land well and you're like, how the fuck did I get here? And I've done that many times in my day. And sometimes I wake up here in the Philippines and this isn't positive or negative, this is just a question. You wake up in the Philippines like you're having a dream, like, you know, maybe I'm back in Georgia or something, and I wake up and I realize, I'm in the fucking Philip. how the fuck did I get to the Philippines? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not saying that's bad, I'm just saying, you know, sometimes I wake up, or how the fuck did I, how the fuck did I get to Thailand? You know? Anyhow. Listen to Hank Williams now. A homemade wine. I love this guy. The sun don't come up tomorrow. Hey, people, I have had a good time. I laid up here in a country state of mine. Love that song, folks. I started not to turn the camera on me tonight, and I said, you know, my balcony here at the penthouse suite is so fucking beautiful. With this breeze coming through, I got mountains, I got Times Square, I got barbecue. How could I not share this with you guys? How could I not share it with you? Go up your hill. So if you get tired of hearing my voice and looking at the same girl, well, I mean, the dialogue's always different. Anyhow, I'm just glad you're here, my friends. I appreciate you joining me. I wish everybody, you know, I wish I could put 20,000 people on this balcony right now and cook for each and every one of you. You know, and if I get into the big time where I got enough money to do that, you know what I mean? Like, I want to rent out a venue a resort or something. Now, let's do a beach resort. I rent out the fucking beach resort for like two nights, invite every subscriber on the channel to come over, and I fucking barbecue, we live stream, we got fucking Filipinas running around everywhere in bikinis. You know, if I get to that big time, that's, that's gonna be my first priority, to throw like an annual subscriber fucking Playboy Mansion type party. That's just fucking epic. It's gonna happen. You know, cause folks, we have we have our own like perceptions of ourselves, and then the perceptions that various people perceive of us, right? And let's see, what we got here. Let me, get, let me get some music going on here. Let's get a little Amarillo by morning. George Strait. Goddamn classic. So, like, the question is, how, how do you perceive yourself? And the way you perceive yourself is different than people perceive you. Most of the time. But the way I perceive myself. Okay, number one. Folks, I'm the new Anthony Bourdain, but I was—I'm not the new Anthony Bourdain. I'm the fucking real deal Anthony Bourdain, okay? And I'm not a perfect motherfucker, but I'm pretty authentic, right? And if people can love Anthony Bourdain, former fucking junkie, and oh by the way, he hung himself, well, okay, they can certainly forgive me for my 
my fucking transgressions, is that the word? My sins and transgressions and everything else, right? But I look at myself like I'm a cross between Tom Cruise, Anthony Bourdain, and fucking Hugh Hefner. <laughs> That's the way I perceive myself. I'm the fucking new Hugh Hefner, Anthony Bourdain, and fucking Tom Cruise, man. Tom Cruise looks pretty good after all his years, and you compare him to uh, his girlfriend on Top Gun 1. Uh, Tom ain't been real nice to her. I mean, she's a sweet lady, but let's just state the facts. You look at a picture of her and a picture of Tom Cruise, and Tom Cruise is still fucking, you know, pretty, pretty tight put together. I don't know if he's had fucking uh, plastic surgery to aid in that process, or he's just aging well. But I ain't had no fucking plastic surgery, folks. I get, I'm like a bottle of motherfucking wine or goddamn Jack Daniels whiskey. I fucking get better looking every day. I can't figure shit out, but I do. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? What you doing? You walking or you, where's your trike? You want to come up and drink a beer? Come on up, man. Drink a beer. You got to go that way. Hey, girl, how are you? <laughs> Folks, it's my buddy Francis. It's Sunday, so Faye don't come to work on Sunday, but they're down there. I think Francis is three sheets to the wind on Red Horse. I'm trying to get him to come up here, but I think he's too drunk to pull the fucking steps. God damn. All right, one more time. Right there in the... I can't, I can't see it, but right there. Bottom right hand corner of your screen. Smash that shit. I'm on my way to a million fucking subscribers. And by the time I hit a million subscribers, the first thing I'm gonna do is throw this subscriber bash. The subscriber beach bash where we rent out a beach resort and I'm gonna barbecue for every every subscriber that shows up. I'm gonna fucking barbecue, I'm gonna cook, we're gonna live stream. We're gonna get drunk for fucking Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's what we're gonna do. That's the first objective. I say I could pull it off once we hit 100,000. Once we hit 100,000, it's time for the fucking uh, subscriber appreciation beach bash. My goodness. Whether we do it here in the Philippines, time. I say we do it here in the Philippines. Let's do it in the Philippines, folks. Mmm, that goddamn beer stays cold in these Yeti cups. I think them 22 ounce tumblers. If you ain't got one of these, I mean, i tell you how to order them, but if you go to Travel Resources, I got the link to the exact ones I got. Yeah, the knockoffs might work, but these fucking Yetis are 25 bucks and they're worth it. This is what I drink my beer out of. They got a lid. Keeps the goddamn flies off of them here in Southeast Asia. Or if you're in a place like San Antonio with a bunch of fucking pigeons shitting, you put that lid on there, they don't shit in your fucking beer. $25. You know? How can you beat that shit? This shit is like magic. Now, I've said before, Yeti, your coolers are too fucking expensive. All of us poor people, we can't afford your fucking $500 coolers. That's a problem. That's a fucking problem, because now rednecks can't afford your shit, and you're catering to the fucking rich. Okay? You got a good price point. I would definitely pay 25 bucks for this. Why? Because it'll last forever, and it's worth it. But I'm not going to give you 500 bucks for a fucking cooler. That's too much beer. I could buy a Walmart cooler and buy a shit ton of beer. So you got to do something, Yeti, because there's other people kicking your ass. People are telling me from America that Ozark Trail Walmart shit is just as good as your cooler. You gotta do something. You gotta do something. Cause I want a cooler from Yeti, but I ain't paying you that much fucking money. That's a big problem. Where the hell Francis go? I think what happened is Faye, Faye told that motherfucker to let's go home. You're not coming over here getting drunk up at Marcos. I'm off today. I think she drug his ass to the house unless he pops out of that door over there. I don't know. Folks, I think I've talked enough. 
that's about what I what happened and went down on my day. Uh, I hope you had a great day. Uh, it's Sunday. No, what the fuck's day is this? No, wait a minute. It is, it's Sunday. This ain't Saturday. This is Sunday. That's why Times Square is quiet. Fuck, I'm a day off. So it's a Sunday night. I uh, hope you had a great Sunday. And get ready for the work week tomorrow if you're in the fucking grind. And if you are in the grind, the only way to deal with it is to fucking embrace it. Don't bitch about it. Don't, don't try to fucking sleep an extra five minutes tomorrow morning because you don't want to go to work. The only way to deal with the grind is to fucking embrace it. Embrace it and go head on with the grind and then you own the grind. And if you don't fucking like your life, well you, you fucking put down some plans and make some changes. But if you're not prepared to fucking make some changes, don't complain about the fucking grind. Don't complain about that fucking job. That's your livelihood. You go in there and you fucking embrace it. But if you don't like it and you're miserable, grab a set of fucking nuts and make a change in your life. Get you a different job, a different wife, a different place to live, and, and fucking set conditions where you are happy. But if you're a fucking skinny jean wearing 20% testosterone lower than me type of pussy and you're not gonna make any changes, that's your fucking fault, not mine. Okay, don't go to work fucking hateful and don't enjoy your fucking job wherever you're at where you make other people miserable because you're too much of a pussy to make a fucking change. Grab a set of fucking nuts. Grab that 80% <laughs> testosterone uh, and make a fucking change for my young bucks and my older dudes if you're in your fucking late 30s and 40s still scared of your fucking wife you better read my fucking book King's Chronicles How to Escape the Wrath of American Women and Live Like a Motherfucking King the down in the description my books are available on Amazon Folks, my pork chops are almost done. And, you know, they look fucking great. I didn't burn them. Anybody, Gordon motherfucking Ramsey, you and your fucking complaining and shit, you know, destroying people's feelings, hurting people's feelings on TV. You're, you're a fucking shithead, man. Fuck you. Big fuck you goes out to Gordon fucking Ramsey. Because you're just an all-around asshole that hurts people's feelings. Motherfuckers trying to... Trying to fucking be professional chefs, pouring all their fucking energy into making fucking dishes, and you just fucking destroy them. From what I've seen, man, stop being an asshole to people, man. There's no sense in that shit. But even Gordon fucking Ramsay wouldn't couldn't complain about my goddamn pork chops tonight, because they're not fucking burnt. They're fucking delicious. Because I got straight up charcoal from Subic Bay. Anyhow, one more big fuck you out to Gordon Ramsay for hurting people's feelings, you know? And, and another fuck you goes out to that asshole who goes around to these hotels and tells them how fucked up they are. Listen, man, yeah, you're going there to try to help them, but you don't gotta be a fucking dickhead, that ball-headed motherfucker that goes to the hotels and just belittles people and destroys fucking people's feelings. Man, fuck you. You don't got to talk to people like that and tell them their hotel is fucked up in that manner. You can go in there and be nice about it. Now, I understand we're all in the entertainment business, and maybe that's why people watch you. But between you and Gordon Ramsay and your fucking toxic motherfucking attitudes belittling people, who the fuck are you? You know, who the fuck made Gordon Ramsay the motherfucking... Uh, God of all chefs and fucking cooking and food and whatever. Motherfucker, you're just one person. And that ball-headed bastard that fucking goes around destroying people about their hotels and shit because they're dirty. You, you ain't got to fucking air people's dirty laundry out like that. It, it, that. That's not the way to fucking help people, motherfucker. So I'll fucking, I'll fucking call you out right now and give you a big fuck you to both of you. That's it. You want to come over here and complain about how clean, how, you know, clean my place is? Motherfucker, number one, my place is fucking spotless. 
And number two, these goddamn pork chops are delicious. So fuck both them dudes. I don't even know that bald headed dude's name that fucking goes around fucking with people about their hotel rooms. But man, that's a shitty way to treat people. So fuck both them up. All right, I'm, I've had a few. All right, folks. I'm going to go ahead and conclude this. I might show you a clip of the final plated product. But I'm going to fire up my... I'm going to fire up this fucking uh, Swisher Sweet because I'm down to my last two Swisher Sweets. If anybody wants to send me some cigars, go to my website, markblacker.com. People always ask me, hey, man, what can I bring you? What can I send you? Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm finally going to come up and I'm going to tell you. Go to my website, markblacker.com. Go to contact. That's my address, my mailing address. You can send me Swisher Sweets or that's uh, those little cigars my buddy brought me. They're called Game Game Blue. They're in a blue two-pack from Dominican Republic. Those damn things are so fresh and delicious, my God. You want to send me something? Swisher Sweets or Game Blue. My address is over on my website. I'm going to contacts. And I, I will certainly appreciate it. I don't give a damn if you send me one cigar. I, I will certainly appreciate it. If you put one in an envelope and send it, not certified, it's cost you about six bucks just to talk about the postage. But I ain't, I'm not sitting here begging you for it, but people, if, if, you, if you're asking what can I send you, I'll take some cigars and I'll say I appreciate it up front. God damn, some beautiful ladies walking around here. Damn. My goodness, that girl got a big old booty. Wow. All right, folks, I'm out of here. I want to thank you for joining me. Thanks for listening to my voice. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out, my friends. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Oh, yeah. Woo. Mm, folks, you ain't never seen no goddamn pork fat looking that delicious right there. And wait, that's, is that two pieces? Yeah, that's a pork chop on top of a piece of pork fat. Mmm. Whoo, the smell coming off of that right there. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. Now, Fatty Mine is going to be so excited when I show her this. Lady. See, I told you, that's two pieces. Look, this is the pork, this is the pork fat. No, that's the pork chop. Now the, the iPhone is not good at low light, that's the problem. But that's the pork fat. That's the motherfucking pork chop. And you can see the clearly, clearly, clearly you can see the difference. That's the pork chop, that's the pork fat. So when Fatty Man comes out here. Oh yeah, motherfucking carrots. God damn carrots taking forever. I'm gonna wait for this girl because she's bringing me. She's bringing me, oh, there you go. Now, now, see, when you get it in the light, you can see better. You know what I'm talking about? It'll give you some different angles. But she's bringing me an extra strong, cheap, Divi Mart bar vodka, because I want to see if it'll get me drunk. Oh, shit. Here she comes. I got George straight on the motherfucking baby. Baby, I got a surprise for you. I want you to smell that right there. How does that look, baby? How does it look? What's it look like? It's good. How's it taste? How is it, baby? Mmm, Filipina approved, my whoop. Whoop. Whoa, shit. I love, I love that girl's ass. This is where the cowboy rides away. Folks, overlook at Times Square on a Sunday night. It's a little bit quiet, but we got dogs barking, barbecue being sold. We got food over there at that place. Fucking Times Square. I love it. These damn carrots are taking forever. All right, folks. <laughs> to yesterday. This is the end of the video, I promise you. I'm not even gonna plate it. 
Because I'm getting so... Not from that vodka, but from too many beers. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching my videos. Boom, Panis. Peace out, people. Hey, Shay. Yeti cups will keep your fucking drinks cold, and they will also keep your motherfucking coffee hot. And by God, if they'll keep the fucking coffee hot, they'll certainly keep the motherfucking pork chops hot. Boom, down in there. Look at that. Look at that fucking pork chop. My God. Boom, down in the Yeti cup. And this motherfucker here might not fit. God damn it. Make room. Make room down in there. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. These fucking carrots. Damn it. Look at that. Got a fucking Yeti cup full of motherfucking pork chops. I'm gonna tell a Filipino wife to come here. She don't know what the fuck is going on. Buddy man, come here. Emergency. 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 <laughs> Baby, I made you a drink. I'm told I made her a drink. I made you a drink. Come here, baby, come here. I made you a drink. Baby, I made you a pork chop slurpee. A pork chop shake. My God. That bitch didn't look too happy, did she? My God. All right, I'm out of here. <laughs>